Hello, this is tutorial 8 and in this tutorial I'll show you a little bit about using, well actually all there is to know about using string for loops and we'll also be talking about abstract classes like this class here, we have s fruit of every class I create I put an s at the beginning of it so to you we have fruit and I've defined this abstract method and it's called get taste but as you can see we have a semicolon here rather than our usual two open curly braces and that's because this is only an abstract class and here we have two classes that extend our fruit class and these is um, but in both these classes is where we set um, the content of what get taste is so we have public class s lemon extends s fruit that's our abstract class so we can use the content here and we, it's a string ver um, method so it has to return a string and I've typed very sour and for apple I've put very sweet just for lack of any other idea but before I show you how to retrieve the information from that, I'm going to quickly show you um, for loops using strings. Right, so what's going on here is is that we're identifying a string like we would with any other for loop, but with the average for loop, you would normally identify an int and also give it a value. But here we're just identifying a loop. And what this loop will do is it will start at zero and loop str will be equivalent to when this first starts processing player's name zero. Then it will plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, etc., 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 until it meets the player's name array's maximum length, which is zero, one, two, three, four, which is four. Right, so that's all that's going on here. So each time this for loop is passed, which will pass multiple times until the length of this string no longer meets the current loop it's on, it will get the value of player name and apply it to loop str. So here we're checking if um, if loop str equals Harry. So we've got Harry over here then you don't need to define Harry to get this to work but we're just checking if it is Harry then player name is Harry if it's not then player name is not Harry and show us what the player name is so I'm going to go ahead and run this and here we have player name is not Harry and it's Ben player name is not Harry it's Sam Ben Sam Bill and then we've got Harry, and then we've got Mike. So you can see how that works, and it's it's quite simple. It's nothing major, but and it's it's a good thing to um, use being able to put um, for um, strings into a for loop to save time, just from that repetitive code sort of like string. You could do this in a while loop. But with this for loop, it sort of saves you time having to type out all the boring parts. Right, so that's all I wanted to show you with this, and now we're going to move on to abstract classes. Right, so like tutorial 7, I think, or 6, um, we used array list and list from the utility Java package. And we'll also need to create a list of our fruits. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Right, I've gone ahead and removed my string array at the bottom and I've also deleted the for loop and added in our list which is an s fruit type. An s fruit type is, our, uh, in, is related to our s fruit main class. Um, I've given that the name fruit and it's an array list. So now we have our list fruit. So let add um, our two extended
classes from our abstract S fruit class. And we do that with the add method. So we've got fruit dot add new s apple and fruit dot add new s lemon. So now in our fruit list we have our two new um, fruits with their special little tastes. And now I can go ahead and create a for loop to retrieve the text that was set with our abstract method in both our fruit classes that's uh, fruit classes that extend our fruit abstract class alright so here we have an s fruit and we've given an uh, s fruit type which is from our s fruit class um, we've given this the value f which will be looped through with the value of fruit which is being passed here so we're going to say string taste because taste is a string and we're going to say f dot get taste f for each fruit and we're going to get the taste for each fruit we've identified as extending from our s fruit class and then we're going to say print out taste taste so let's go ahead and run that and there we have it taste very sweet taste very sour it's gone in that order because we've added the apple first and then the lemon if we wanted we could switch those around compile again run again and there we have very sour then very sweet and that's using abstract classes that and um, four string loops Thanks for watching.